Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here. Got all kinds of things for you here in this CCNA 2012 video practice exam on OSPF Fundamentals. I've got five questions for you today, actually six, there is an extra credit one, uh, that I'm going to hit you with in there too. And as we go through the questions at the beginning of the video, we're going to go through them pretty quickly. So if you want to pause the video, great idea. Uh, if not, that's fine. Stick around for the answers, even if you think you know all of them, because I've got a couple of demos in this one for you, too. Some very important OSPF commands for you to see. Let's get started off with the most fundamental of fundamentals. What does OSPF use to logically segment a network? And we do this to, among other things, lessen the hit that we take on a network if there is a problem. It helps us to keep the problem localized. So let's go ahead and head to the next question. A Cisco router serial interface will reflect what OSPF cost when the bandwidth is set to the default. So when I bring up the live equipment, I've got an OSPF config running. I haven't done anything strange with the serial interface, I promise you. Uh, what will that cost be? And here's the extra credit question. What about an Ethernet interface? What OSPF cost will that have? Let's head to the next question. One of my favorites. Name two different ways that you can double an OSPF interface's dead time. And they're each interface level commands. Okay. Final question, what is the administrative distance of a route that's learned by OSPF via route redistribution? Now, in the CCNA, you're not going to be doing a lot of hardcore route redistribution, but it's good to know the fundamentals. Is it going to be 170, the same as an internal route, double that of an internal route, or can we just not do that? All right, we'll get ready to hit the live equipment in just a second. I want to tell you about a free course I've got out on Udemy.com right now for the new CCNA security exam. Uh, that's going to be changing over in September 2012. We're going to have a full-blown course ready for you, but along the way, I'm going to create training videos, uh, some tutorials, that kind of thing, and put them in this Udemy course. Uh, and when it says free right there, it means really free. I'm not going to ask you for a dime. And on top of that, I'm going to give an exclusive discount on the final CCNA security video course to everyone who is in here. So it's definitely worth your while. And of course, if you're working on your CCNA, please check out my on-demand video boot camp there at the same site. Over 22 hours of training, fully downloadable and just 97 bucks. If you're visiting my website, which is soon to get a much needed refresh, thank goodness, you can just go to the default page, click on the widget right there with Udemy widgets, and get all the information you need there. They've got one sample up here of network fundamentals you can watch, but they changed something here, and that's what I really want to show you. If you scroll down through all the 60 lessons here to the ICND2 section, the first two OSPF videos are free. That's 70 minutes of hardcore OSPF training, so it's definitely worth your time to check out. Now, let's go back through those questions, and I'll bring the live equipment up here and give you some extra tips while we're at it. What do we use in OSPF to logically segment a network? That is an area. And, of course, we use autonomous systems with EIGRP, DELCES, that's a frame relay term. And while we use virtual links in OSPF, it's not something we do to segment the network. And one thing I wanted to show you on that here on Router 2 just as a quick reminder of what the syntax of that network command is, and it's network, and then you've got your network, your actual network, then your wildcard mask, and that's where the area comes into play at the very end of the command. It's just area, whatever it happens to be in this case. I put them both in the backbone area of area zero. Now, what about these defaults? These are two really important defaults for you to know for the exam. And there's an excellent command I want to show you here as well, because whenever you see anything that has something to do with, say, serial zero, you tend to run, well, you know, show interface serial zero. And you're going to get a lot of helpful information here, but there's not too much here that is OSPF specific. So what you want to run instead, if you're troubleshooting OSPF or you need some of that information, is show IP OSPF interface and then follow that with the actual interface name. I have a long-winded command, but there's a lot of great info here. And going from top to bottom here, let's spend a minute with this because it's an excellent command. You got the process ID, of course, that's locally significant only, uh, the router ID, the local RID, network type, and there's the cost I was referring to. 
by default our Cisco router serial interface cost is going to be 64. It's also going to tell you what state, uh, if it's a DR or a um, BDR or a D, uh, BDR other, excuse me, a DR other, which is what we have here. And it's going to tell you what the designated router is for that particular segment, what the IP address of that particular device is as well. It's also telling us there's no backup designated router on this network. And it's also going to show you your timer intervals right there. Very important. Hello 30 dead time 120. So while we're here, let's run that command for Ethernet 0. And you will see that very important cost is 10. So for our serial interface, the default cost was 64. And for the Ethernet interface or broadcast interface, it was 10. Now you'll notice the hello and dead times are different on these two interface types as well. That's a good thing to note. And also note that the hello time, excuse me, the dead time is four times the hello time. And that kind of comes into our next question, or actually does come into the next question. Two different ways you could double an interface's OSPF dead time. Well, let's hop back to the router and we'll work on Ethernet zero. Let's say you wanted to make this 80 seconds. And note, again, this is an interface level command. You don't go into router OSPF to set this. And what we could do is just use the dead interval command. So if we type dead interval here, usually you're going to see this in a book or an exam is just dead. But I do want to show you the full command. And then it's going to ask in seconds. Here's an exam tip, and I don't care what exam you're working on. Please always use iOS help whenever you can when you're putting in a numeric value for a command because some of them are going to be time-based ones, some of them are going to be seconds, some are going to be minutes, some are going to have both involved uh, and that goes for our data sizes as well. It's always a good idea to check that out. So you could do IP OSPF dead interval 80 right there but what you could also do if you wanted to set this to 80 without using the dead interval command what could you do? you could set the hello interval to 20 because this will dynamically change the dead time. And there it is. Note that I changed hello time to 20 and the dead time automatically adjusted as well. Now as a bonus bonus before we go to that last question, what's going to happen here in just a few seconds? Do we, are we going to have a problem with what we just did? We are going to have a problem because now we've got a timer mismatch. And I believe when we come back to this router in just a moment, we're going to lose an adjacency because the router 2 now is going to have a different hello and dead interval than its neighbor down at router 3. And I think we're going to have a problem. We'll come back and check that out in just a moment. Now this one. What is the administrative distance of a route learned by OSPF via route redistribution? Don't fall for the 170 because that's EIGRP. And you can definitely redistribute routes into OSPF. And the answer is going to be C, the same as an internal route. The administrative distance does not change. So let's go over here and see if we've lost that adjacency yet. And you can see right here, we didn't see a log message. I must not have had that set. But node right here, neighbor count is 1. And then adjacent with 23, 3.3. .3. And notice right here that we got a neighbor count is 0. So obviously it's not going to show us any other neighbors. So of course that's something we have to watch with adjacencies. When the hello and dead times do not match, you are going to lose that adjacency. That takes care of our OSPF video practice exam and review for today. Thanks for watching this one. Make sure to check out my other ones on YouTube. Some are a little shorter, some are a little longer, but they're all free on YouTube and all well worth watching. I'm Chris Bryant. Thanks for making TBA part of your certification success story.